Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I haven't done a Linux and ham radio video for a little while, so I thought I would do one on decoding POCSAG, P-O-C-S-A-G, um, paging transmissions. Now, pagers, believe it or not, are still in use, mostly uh, with doctors and hospitals. Go figure. Um, but the uh, paging system in POCSAG was developed quite a while ago. Um, looking at the history on Wikipedia, uh, POCSAG, first off, is an acronym for Post Office Code Standardiz Standardization Advisory Group. <laughs> um, boy, what an acronym. Uh, it was developed by the British Post Office, so hence the name Post Office Code um, in the uh, acronym. Uh, back then, the British Post Office operated most telecommunications in uh, the UK before uh, it was private, before telecom was privatized. Uh, way back in 1976, uh, an international group of engineers uh, met to begin developing a new code for wide area paging. And uh, let's see, that uh, was those meetings were successful, and in February of 1981, it took them five years. Uh, the CCIR, which is the earlier version of what's now the ITU, um, accepted the code as, uh, the, the developed code as radio paging code number one. And now we know it as POCSAG. Now pagers were really popular, um, especially in the uh, well late 70s uh, on through the 80s, um, into the 90s, even the 2000s, before the proliferation of cell phones replaced them in a wide way. But as I said, they're still in use. Now, um, a quick disclaimer, uh, this protocol is clear text. There's no encryption, so everything that is transmitted is transmitted in the clear. Uh, that said, often the people that use these systems uh, are not aware that everything that they're putting into them is like being shouted through a megaphone from the rooftop. Uh, they don't know that it's in the clear, so it's possible that in decoding POCSAG or pager transmissions, you might run across confidential information. I have seen addresses and phone numbers of patients, for example, being sent. So be ethical, okay? It's possible that some poor employee isn't aware that what they're sending out could be received by anyone, and they might be sending somebody's confidential information. So be ethical, do not abuse whatever you might decode, all right? It's transmitted in the clear, it's transmitted wide open. Uh, there's nothing that, that, at least in this country, that we're doing that's illegal, but that doesn't mean that the people that are sending the information are aware that they're telling everybody whatever they're sending. So that said, okay, that's, that's out there and that's put aside now. Um, all right, so uh, to decode these transmissions, we're gonna need to receive them. Now, I'm not going to go into setting up GQRX, which is the, the, the SDR software we're going to use. Uh, I'm not going to go into setting up your SDR dongle. Uh, I'm using one of these little RTL USB dongles here. And uh, I'm going to assume for this tutorial that you have already got your SDR dongle running and the GQRX um, SDR program installed and operational. So if you don't, pause now find another tutorial and go get those set up. Once you have those set up and you're ready to start receiving, well, we need to find some signals. So what does POCSAG look like in the waterfall? Well, this is a typical POCSAG transmission. You're going to find them in the UHF frequency range, usually somewhere between 450 megahertz and 470 megahertz and they're very distinguishable. They have these two very defined peaks right here. It is a frequency shift keyed mode with two frequencies that are about 4.5 kilohertz apart. That's why you see those two peaks. What does it sound like? Well, here is an audio sample of a POCSAG transmission.
Now what really distinguishes uh, POXAG is the initial sync tones. If you listen to the beginning of the transmission, you'll hear a high tone flipping to a low tone, and then the data. Here it is again. So you want to listen for that tone, that tone sequence, and then data. That's a POXAG transmission. To decode that, we're going to use a program called Multimon NG. Now, Multimon is a very simple little program, uh, but it's only distributed by source code, so we're going to have to build it from source. Don't get freaked out. It's not as hard as it sounds. I'll walk you through it step by step. But we're also going to need a couple of other programs um, to process the audio. GQRX will stream audio across a network. It has, if we go back and we look at GQRX, down here under input, down here at the bottom actually, I guess it doesn't matter what controls you have set up there, uh, down here at the bottom where the audio display window is, there's a button right here marked UDP. If you click that button, then GQRX will start streaming audio over a network port, port 7300, I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Unix pipes um, to pipe data from GQRX through a program that will process that audio to the format that Multimon needs, and then we're going to pipe that output to Multimon for decoding. And it's really cool that you can do this under Linux. You can pipe data from one program to another program to do something to it, pipe it to another program to do something more to it, and finally spit out what you want. And those pipelines can be as long as you want. You can combine all kinds of programs to process things, and it's a very powerful feature of Linux. So we're going to need a program called Netcat. Netcat lets you connect to a network port and obtain data from it. So that, that Netcat will connect to GQRX and pull in the audio data. Then we're going to use a program called SOX, S-O-X, which is an audio processor, to convert that raw audio data into a format that Multimon needs, and then we're going to pipe the output from SOX to Multimon for decoding. Sounds complex, but it's really not that hard. But first, we need Multimon. Okay, to get Multimon, open your web browser, and we're going to go to uh, github.com slash Elias Anil slash Multimon dash NG. I will put that address in the video description down below. So you can just go click on it. Uh, once you get there, on the GitHub page, over here on the right is a clone or download button, that green button. So we'll click that and we'll hit download zip. And that will download the source code into your downloads directory. So I'll come down here and hit show in folder. Oh, I got a lot of stuff in my downloads directory. I should have cleared that out before I did the video. Anyway, uh, we'll find the zip file. Here it is. And we'll right click on it and select extract here. And that will create a folder named Multimon NG master. All right, now that we've got a Multimon source code downloaded, we're going to need to install uh, some additional software. You may have some of these packages installed already, you may not. I'm going to assume that you don't, and we're going to go from scratch. <clears throat> so open a terminal, and you can do that with Control-Alt-T. And once you have your terminal open, let's uh, eliminate some clutter here so it's a little easier to see what's going on. There we go. Okay, we're going to type sudo, which means do the following command as root, apt-get space install space. Uh, let's see, we need netcat, so that's netcat-openbsd space uh, sox, s-o-x, space. Uh, then we need the, stop, the uh, software to compile programs, so that's build dash essential and CMake. Hit enter and it will install the software. In my case it's telling me I've already got them. Uh, it, it'll ask for your password too, by the way, and then it'll install the software. Once all that's done, we're ready to build Multimon. 
I'm going to type cd and enter to get to my home directory. And then I'm going to do a cd downloads. And if we do a directory ls, we'll see multimon right there. So I'll change into that directory cd multimon star. Didn't like that. Oh, it's because I got the zip file. Now, yeah, I'll just cheat there. cd multimon dash nd dash master. Now we're in that directory. If I do an ls, we'll see all the source code. But it's real easy to build. Here's how you build it. We make a directory called build. mkdir space build. We change into build. cd space build. And then we simply type cmake dot dot. And the rest of the process is automated. Boom, just like that, it's done, it's compiled, and it's ready to be run. Well, I need to install it into my system. So we'll type sudo make install. We have to do that as super user because it's going to copy the program file down into our system. And it's done, it's installed. All right. Now that we've got Multimon built and installed, that was easy, wasn't it? Uh, we're ready to start decoding some Poxag. So I'm going to go launch GQRX. And I have already put in a frequency of uh, local hospitals um, Poxag transmitter. And there it is. You should be able to hear that. Not quite on frequency. If I zoom in, I can see that I'm just slightly off, so I'll just move that over a little bit. Alright, so there we go. We have GQRX receiving a Poxag transmission. We need to decode it. I'm going to lower that volume a little bit. Now here is the thing that's going to make you go, whoa! This is the string that we have to type in. <laughs> oh my okay I have to make it easier on you guys I will have copied this string and put it in the video description down below so you can just highlight it and copy and paste it but let's go through it first up we have NC which is netcat and some options telling it to listen on a network port 7355 which is the default port that uh, GQRX spits data out of then the pipe symbol, and then SOX and its information. We need it to convert the audio, that's quite a long one, to a, a specific format for uh, Multimon, there we go, to use. Uh, and then a pipe symbol again, and then Multimon. And with Multimon, we're telling it to uh, take raw audio data, and we're telling it to use these decoders, POXAG 512-A space POXAG 1200-A space POXAG 2400, um, and then decode alpha. So yeah, quite a long string, but like I said, it's in the description below. You can just copy it and paste it into your terminal. Uh, and then maybe paste it into a text editor so you've got it for reference, so you don't have to type all this in every time. Quite a long string, but basically what it's doing is netcat is connecting to GQRX to receive the audio data, piping that to SOX, which is converting that audio data to the type of raw format that Multimon expects, and then we're piping its output to Multimon for decoding. So when I hit enter, it's going to start decoding. Now, after this transmission. Oh, no, it's not. Haha! -ha. We need to tell GQRX to start sending the data. So remember that UDP button over here in GQRX? If I click on that button, it'll start streaming and Multimon will start decoding. There it goes. So it looks like a lot of gobbledygook, but uh, you'll basically see everything that the paging transmitter is sending out. And that's how you decode that uh, the uh, POXAG audio. Now a couple of notes. Oh, control C to break.
and you'll notice that every transmission starts with um, information about what modulator it's using, POXAG 1200. Address is the pager that this transmission is aimed at. Uh, function is what type of data is being sent. In this case, it's alphanumeric. And then finally, the message. So if you don't want to see that whole header every time, if you just want to see the messages, I've counted these characters, and 51 characters puts us about there, 52 characters puts us about there. So remember how Linux can pipe things? I'm going to take my command line here that's doing the decoding, and I'm going to add one more thing, another pipe symbol, and I'm going to use the program called cut, C-U-T, minus or dash C space 52 minus cut will cut the so many characters from the beginning of a line so every line of text that's being decoded will pass through cut and will drop the first 52 characters so I'll hit enter and let's wait for the next transmission there now you can see we're just getting the text of the pages by adding that other command cut that's what's cool about piping data in Linux. You can pipe data through as many programs as you need to achieve whatever you need to achieve. So there we go. And you can tell this is a hospital because we look here, family room, we have a bedside table beside the nurse's station that needs repaired. So that's not obviously a message being sent to maintenance. <laughs> and oops, oh, I'll have to blur that. There's a uh, an address and phone number for a um, <laughs> they gave the guy's name, they gave his home address, and they gave his phone number. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'll have to blur that. Um, control C to break. Sometimes you see this kind of stuff here. Um, Poxag can be used to send more than just messages. It can be used to send uh, special graphics and information to certain types of pagers, and that's what those are. So anyway, there you go. That's how you can decode POXAG transmissions using Multimon and uh, GQRX under Linux. I hope you found that tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.